Sam, just overall thoughts you have from this game. And, and the targeting call on Catalan, what, what did you see on that play and how big was it? Well, I saw him, you know, I thought he tried to avoid, the, you know, tried to avoid. Uh, he, had, he was he coming in with his shoulder. Their, their uh, receiver, you know, went, went lower as he was going towards the ground. And I, I felt like he was trying to avoid the, the contact. But, um, you know, I can see what they saw as well. But, but uh, certainly uh, it looked to me like he was trying to avoid getting his head out of there and trying to avoid uh, the receiver's hel helmet as well. Uh, on the game, you know, LSU had the ball the whole time. I think, you know, they probably looked out there and saw um, some new new faces on the D-line and and, uh, and felt like uh, they possibly could have a, a good running game on us, which, you know, they did. I mean, they rushed for 150 yards, but, uh, um, you know, they, they, they controlled the football game. You know, they controlled it, and, and we – we had big plays on offense, but, uh, you know, we had a couple of long, long drives. Uh, did a nice job catching the football, but we just didn't have a lot of consistency uh, during the game, and we couldn't hand the ball off to the tailback and run the ball very well. And, and uh, the bottom line is that's probably the, the – they could run it and we couldn't. Uh, that's probably the difference in the, in the football game. Hey, Biddy. Yeah, Coach, with the focus that you guys had on third downs this week, I imagine you got to be a little disappointed in the performance. Well, whether we had focus on it or whether we didn't, uh, I would imagine we'd be disappointed in third down. Um, you know, we just had Trey. We just had to keep working on it. You know, um, um, you know, there's so many. Anytime you lose by three, there's so many points in the game that that can go one way or the other. You know, we had an opportunity to go up eight, you know, and we couldn't convert that third down, that specific, that specific one. And and we had got a field goal and went up four. And then, you know, certainly if we'd have went up eight, then we'd have put a lot of pressure on them. We couldn't do it. And it was that way a lot. Uh, our big plays, I believe, a lot of them came on first and second down. However, we did convert the fourth and three to keep the game alive and give us opportunity to tie it. So we'll just keep working at it. Uh, you have to give uh, LSU's defense credit. They, they had a nice game plan. They did a nice job. Great shot. Coach, what went into the uh, decision to kick the field goal there late? Did you, how long did you think about possibly going for it? Fourth and three, 45 yard field goal, down three. What would you have said if we'd have went for it and didn't make it? Kick the field goal. To me, there wasn't a, there wasn't a question of what you do. We're gonna tie the game up. We didn't think they had enough time. They weren't a prolific throwing the ball football team. Uh, they were. They only had a timeout left as well. So, I you know if it might have been if it was closer. Uh, we might have tried it, but I have confidence in Reed, and I, I certainly thought we could protect it, and I thought we would, and there was no doubt in my mind we'd make it. We probably would have, but we had it tipped. Coach. Yeah, Coach, uh, I don't think Jonathan Marshall came off the field, but for a couple of plays, what did you think of his play today, and then how big was it to have him in there when you're rotating a bunch of young guys in at defensive ends? Well... The guy's a he's a he's wonderful. I mean, the guy plays his tail off. Uh, he's a fighter. Um, you know, nobody said a word. You know, he didn't say a word. He didn't say, "Hey, where's so and so, so and so, so and so." He said, "Hey, let's go, coach. These guys will be fine." You know, I love my staff. There wasn't one bit of uh, negativism over. Um, you know, the bottom line is we had the numbers to play, and that's the spirit of the game. They don't. You know, they don't ask you who you have to play. They say, do you have this amount of numbers, this amount of numbers? And we did. Uh, and we went to play, and nobody nobody said a word about it. And to be honest with you, um, we we should have played today, and that's what we did. Scotty. Hey, Coach, what did you see? Is maybe the, there were causes defensively for the, the struggles on third down. I think LSU had 12 third down conversions. 
You know, not a lot, you know, there, there was some pressure, you know, obviously they had some pressure, um, you know, uh, they, they covered us pretty good. You know, even, even the plays that we made, a lot of the slant routes that we usually, you know, a little more wide open, they, they had, you know, where they're, where their veterans or whether where their players were were in the secondary that had played you know more ball and uh so i, I honestly I, I i thought we'd be able to run it a little bit better than what we did and and when they took that away from us uh, we played a little bit more into their strength because they had really two or more um, edge rushers that were outstanding uh players and then I thought going into the game that their secondary was 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 a fine secondary. Otis. Coach Pittman, uh, it seems like Mike Woods just gets better every week. I mean, just talk about his play. I mean, this it seems like every week he just gives you more and more big plays. Well, he's a competitor, you know, and uh, really has good hands. And, uh, you know, it, it takes a good receiver to win – against a good corner, a good press corner. And uh, Mike's big and he's long. And so he's, a, he's able to do that. So I'm really, really proud of him. He works awful hard. The game means a lot to him. He wants the ball. And uh, just he, continue, he continues to get better. He's a, he's a go-to guy now. Troy. Hey, Coach, how big was uh, time of possession in today's game? Because the Tigers held the ball for nearly 42 minutes. Um, I'd say it was huge. I mean, they let the clock run down. They looked every play. They let the clock run down. They had a really good game plan. I mean, they were going to – they were they, they didn't care. They, they You know, the problem was they were winning first down. You know, and there you went first down. You got a third, a second, three, a, a second, and four. You can sit there and and you can milk the clock all day. And uh, you know that's what they did. They were doing a really good job on their first down, and we weren't. We, we you know we we didn't have a lot of success on defense on first down. So you know that was their game plan. You know we we can blame whoever we want to blame, but. When the offense has the ball, they need to go score. And when the defense is out there, they need to get off the field. And we, we couldn't do it. Basil. Hey, Coach. Uh, had multiple review plays today. Um, seems, seems to be really disruptive to the game. And, of course, you could hear the fans. They weren't in agreement. What's your thoughts on the whole process and, you know, just how, how it affects the game and how, what it looks like to you on the sidelines versus what the final call is? No, I think it's good for the game. I do. Uh, I think there's a reason for it and all that. Nobody wants to have that much, much disruption of momentum in a football game, including the officials, you know. But I will say this. There were a lot of reviewable plays. When they, when they went up there, you're going, well, this is, this is you know, and about, on, honestly, I want them all to go our way, every one of them. But there were some that I, you know, I understood the fumble, you know, I thought was ours. The, but when when they when they took away the touchdown when he went into the end zone, I mean, I could have seen very easily they would have gave him that touchdown. So, um, you know, reviews basically over a long run probably go fifty uh, fifty when it's all said and done. Momentum is a factor when they do that, but they have to do it. So I don't know what the, 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 the best answer for that is, but I know that for the most part, uh, they're able to get them right. Um, I wish we wouldn't have lost Catalan, though. Bob? Sam, I, I get what you're saying by not making excuses about the lack of defensive linemen, but you know, I think you lost four, four or five guys, several of whom have started. How challenging did that make it? Did it affect your game plan in terms of not being able to rush as many guys to put pressure on Finley? And how do you think the young guys played around, Jonathan? Well, it gives opportunity for them guys to play. And in and, and the future, we'll be a better football team because they were, they were, they were able to go out there and play. Uh, Again, you know, we talk all the time about all we have is all we need. And, and, and I think that's what we felt going into the game. And, 
and we we did for the most part. But you know, uh, it was good for those kids to get in there and play. You know, I think the rule is uh, three or four D linemen, and we had nine available. I mean, we did. They just hadn't played before, but uh, so um, I was proud of their effort, um, and they'll they'll continue to get better. Jason, hey, coach. Just the impact that Jalen has. How much does that change your defense? I think we've seen it twice this year with both those ejections. Just what does that do to the defense when he's not back? They're kind of commanding, especially the second. I think you know the game's a lot about confidence and belief and and things of that nature. And obviously, you want to play your best players, you know. But he brings such a confidence, such a aura, you know, around him uh, that he affects the team positively maybe even more than his play you know obviously he's a really good player and things of that nature but uh, and it's very seldom you might say a redshirt freshman is a leader but he is and uh, so it affects you obviously in a lot of areas skill wise playability uh, communication and the fact that uh, our players believe in him Trey Shack. Yeah, Coach, obviously the team's disappointed. I know you're disappointed. What, what did you tell them after the game and not being able to, to keep the boot here in Arkansas now? Uh, just, uh, you know, we're all disappointed. It hurt. And, uh, you know, just said we have two more games left. And, and not a whole lot you need to say when you go in there and you look at them and you know it affects them. There's not a whole lot you need to say. We have to get better. Um, we can't go out and party and all that stuff. We can't get COVID, you know, just basic things that you say all the time. But I did tell them I was extremely proud of them and proud of their effort because I damn sure am. Much. Sam, on the Catalan injection, what, it, it didn't look like his helmet touched him. What was the explanation from the official? Man, I'm not going to answer that stuff. It cost me money and it's over with and, you saw it. I mean, the explanation was what I said earlier. Um. Uh, Sam, you said that uh, LSU had a good game plan against the limited your run game. What, what do they do? What made a difference on that? They ran the ball like this. Straight down, straight down, straight at us. They have big offensive linemen. You know, they're 320 pounds at guards and <clears throat> right downhill at us. And uh, that's what you'd like to do whenever you're a lot bigger than your opponent. Uh, the thing with LSU, they were just scary enough throwing the football and Finley running the football that we didn't bring a whole lot of man pressure. And when we did, he hurt us. And... Uh, Gilbert is a matchup nightmare because he's a big, fast, physical, tall, tight end, and uh, he hurt us as well. Hey, Sam, I'm sorry. I meant the other side of the ball. They, they limited your run game. How did they do it? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, we, did, we, we didn't particularly block well, it didn't look like. You know, um, uh, we were on the edge a lot. Um, and uh, I don't know that we – you know, trusted it after early. You know, we're a team that, you know, we talked about half about staying with the run, you know, and and um, because we can't get people to bite up on the pass if we can't run the football. But they were they were physical. They they were twisting their inside players a little bit, and and we tried to run a draw, and they twisted like like we we anticipated. But they did a little bit more movement. They were pretty plain vanilla on a lot of their games that we watched. And uh, they did a little bit more movement of the D-line. And I thought, honestly, I thought their linebackers played a, uh, a good football game uh, today and, and made a lot of tackles. Last one, Baz. We're good. I think I'm good now. Coach, uh, LSU secondary came into this game as one of the more poorest secondaries in the country. 
and um, obviously when you started, you struggled to run the ball, but it seemed like you didn't take you know, your, your deep ball success was good today, but it seemed like you didn't for a while, didn't take many shots. You had one shot, which was a 65 yard touchdown to uh, Burks early, but it seemed like it took until about the third quarter to start taking some deep shots. Is that just my observation? Or did it seem that way? You know, I don't know, you know, on every play, is that you Baz? Yeah, on, on every play, Baz, there's somebody going deep and someone short and someone crossing. You know, um, I don't know that that we didn't attempt those balls, you know. And I, early I thought that he was flushed a lot, you know, so he really couldn't sit in there and throw the deep ball. Um, but we, we we wanted to go after their secondary and throw the ball deep. I know that was a big part of our game plan. But I think you're right, you know, it was maybe – well, I think we might have had one, one drive where we might have thrown the ball a little deeper early. And then in the second half, we, you know, Mike attacked them twice in there. But uh, to be honest with you, to throw the ball deep, you have to be able to protect it. And I think we were a little bit concerned about dropping back there and, and uh, with their two edge rushers. So we wanted to try to do it. And if you saw us take deep throws, Baz, I think for the most part it was on early downs. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate you.